What's up, guys? Um, all right, so let's talk about yesterday's last night's trade. Um, here it is. We sold at 7181, stop loss, uh, take profit 747, stop loss 7311. This is a one to one trade. We had selling environment, we had selling movement. Um, we had two options option A, B, C. I thought we were, we were going to be going down fast due to uh, we were on a, an, an impulse leg, right? So, you know, we went up, down, you know. Um, however, what, what, ended, what ended up happening was option two. So price ended up retesting, as you see here, above here, this resistance, and then it went down. My take profit, dude, look at it, 747. So that was, that was a win, by the way, and so far we got 10 trades, we got three losses, so it's, Price went all the way to 74, 751, 750, dude. So I lost by a little bit. Um, I mean, my, my take, I didn't lose at all. I, I, my take profit didn't hit. Um, horrible, uh, but it's okay. I still took, pro I ended up taking profits. Uh, I took 50% profits, uh, a little bit lower down here. Oh, sorry, I took 75% profits, a little bit lower. And then I put my stop loss to entry and then I let the rest run, but I woke up today and I'm just closing it out. Also, what we could see here, guys, these work very well. Price, you know, tends to respect that you got body candle closes, you got wicks on there, you got body candle closes. And it has, it has broken that. We have a head and shoulders at the market side for B here. We do got some potential upwards. So, you know, it's looking like it's going to continue to go up. Um, I mean, sorry, that's going to go up. We got a channel here that hasn't uh, been broken. This little pattern here, little pendant right there, uh, could be a, uh, a a pattern that's going to ultimately change the, the character, right? change the structure, which it is. We got a triple bottom. Um, it, we could begin an upward movement and then back down to retest to go back up. Uh, let's go ahead and see here. Why did I make my take profit at 747? Why did I make it at the, I mean, at the set at the seven one at the 786? Why? Because this pattern, this is a fractal. This is happening right now. This already happened before in a bigger version of it. Let me show you. You got a massive downward movement. Massive downward movement, consolidation, up move. Massive down, downward move consolidation, downward move, the exact same ones almost too. Here you go. You know? Get the, yeah. So we're at this position, we're at this point here. Okay? You got that massive leg down, another massive leg down, massive leg down, another massive leg down. So we could be at, uh, you know, we're, we're, we could be at the tipping point here. We're probably there in this area. So that's why I might take my, my uh, take profit there. All right. By the way, me and my friend use uh, my account what we call our account. And you and he follows, he's a uh, Jason, Jason Casper. So that's why he has kind of like, this kind of looks like that. But I changed the market cipher guys. I changed it. I put this as a line. I put the view up as a line and I put the, the leading momentum wave as a line. Price is uh, not, you know, it's having a tough time breaking the view up. And, and let's talk about this too. So as you can see, we got a massive move down and then it up brings it, takes all the orders from the top here. Massive move down, takes all the moves from up here. Massive move down, we could get the same thing. So a, a buy and, and every, everything is indicating here on market side for B is indicating upward movement. So we could just get one of these candles. Boom. So this, well, we would have to get all the liquidity from here. But it doesn't it doesn't uh, go above the previous you know consolidation zone. So here's a previous consolidation zone. 
So we might just go with a nice little pump up here to bring it back down here. But this is where traders get destroyed. This zone right here, traders are gonna get destroyed. See, like that's that's hard trading right there. But This is where we're at. We could either be here or here, but we're, it's looking like it's this one, 786, 786, same, same pattern. Yeah, we're getting a bottoming out on market side for B here. Oh, we have a 28. Oh no, that was 28 as I have it. That's very rare. If price closes above, uh, you know, all these candles, we're going to be above VWAP. We're going to be above previous price action. That's a very strong, powerful sign that we're continuing up. But we are in a sell. We are in a selling environment, so sales, uh, sales are more preferred. So once channel, once price breaks the channel, we'll have an inverse head and shoulder. That's what we're waiting for. Can you get coffee? You know, composure. We get that right there. Could be getting that right there. We would wait, right? So, like, you would wait for price to break here. You're gonna get. You would get a strong candle up. You would get a nice strong candle back down to retest previous support, previous resistance now support. And that's that's the candle that we would enter in after the support candle, after the after the retest support candle. After the retest support candle. We know compadre, guys. Oh, oh, well, gave some price action. Then. Yeah, 
Damn it. Atlanta. I went to the my to the muscle beach yesterday. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Muscle bitch. Miami, bro. It's pretty cool, guys. Oh, what the fuck is that? Nah, bro, I ain't trying to look at it, guys, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, it's pretty cool. You go here, it's you know they got two canisters, one can, and these have all the weights and all that stuff. So it's pretty cool. All this is outside, but the canisters and you know, uh, sorry, the, the weights are in everything inside the canisters. It's really cool. See, we can just find like some more pictures of it. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty cool. Instead of just guys on there, where's the fucking actual equipment? Okay, guys, look at that. Look at that. Powerful, powerful signs. We did. We did get that here though. But this is different. We got a head and shoulders. Head and shoulders are very powerful on, on Market Cypher B. Get my account ready to do a potential trade here. Okay. Uh, 
no mama wait I'm from California. I recently moved here to Miami to make my dream come true. I've, I've joined a group that they're also based in Miami. They have a, or they have a lot of people in Miami, so that's why I came here. Um, so all of you guys are from California. They're all sleeping. All my friends and other people that I'm on the internet. It's looking like it's going to happen. So we broke the channel. I'm going to, I'm going to enter half of a position right here. Okay, we got a uh, position in. Okay, we're in. I'll answer the rest of it as at higher at a, after a retest. You know what I'm saying? I'm pushing it to go to sleep. You guys follow my my uh, my backup page, Crip Smart, my regular page. A nice amount of followers. Let me get more likes, but I'm not, I don't post as much. I need to post more daily. Oh yeah, this is what I was gonna post actually. Twitter's actually gonna allow people, content creators to get paid in USDC. That's fucking dope. Who is the who is gonna be the bag holder of USDC? Who's gonna hold a lot of USDC? Black Rock. Black Rock handles circles USC cash reserves as part of four hundred million funding round. The biggest uh, fund in the, on the planet world's largest asset manager, fund asset manager, whatever you want to call them. I'd say it's good. Not really crypto related, but I mean.
Uh, short. Time and trouble. Let's retest it to the main time. I think it's time for the bolts to come on.
fuck? Uh-oh. What's going to happen? What's going to happen?
Price is retesting. Price is retesting the previous uh, previous uh, support levels around here. So guys, what we're waiting for is a uh, retest down this area and then move up. <laughs> 
That's what the potential is going to happen, guys. It may not, though. See the VWAPs shorting it.
What do we got, guys? We got, guys. Retesting. We got a little retesting. Got retesting. <sighs> Not looking good, huh, guys? Not looking good. Let's see, though. I don't get on the wind and I'm keeping her loose. Quick All right, see you.
I was, I was be texting my sister. I'm, uh, I'm gonna get her. <clears throat> oh, I'm gonna get her to uh, post more on YouTube and you know grow her channel. Okay. What the fuck is going on here? Let's go, guys. <clears throat> I think we're getting that retest. I think we're getting that retest here. <clears throat> A lot of shit going on here, man. It's all good, though. What's up? Oh, let's see here. It's all good here. It's going to be the new dynamic support area here. But, you know, we did get a triangle, which is a reversal signal, which could be bad news for us. As you can see, this one went down, this one went down. Man, looks like crypto's getting fucked. I mean, probably actually still are, because um, from a market cap. We got divergence on here though. Oh, no, it's a convergence. That was a divergence, yeah. But that spike. Super fun. I'm on fire. Song is hard right here. It's hard like your titties. No <laughs> way, it's dope. <clears throat> oh, we need to update that. So she got us take. I don't think you guys can hear the song that's playing. Clean your fucking ears. Clean your ears, douchebags. We're at 24, pretty low. Forty-seven, it's pretty low, but definitely got a big up, up spike from that.
Come on, Pa. There we go. Probably getting that retest. We got daily and short-term sentiment bearish signals on XRP, my baby. Look, but it went up 63. Before, guys, it was at it was at 50. It was in the 50s. It was 58, and price was actually much higher. It was at 70, 73, around 73 cents. So, can why is it changing? Is a question. Taking too long, man. Yeah, to get this truck is I was reading Victor Stableton. Victor Stableton, very interesting. <clears throat> we got that retest until we got rake above you, bitch. Hurry the fuck up.
Dang, dang. So it was a little bit of a premature entry, right, guys? Premature entry. Premature entry. Premature entry. Get some more coffee. All right, let's get our uh, daily, daily checklist. I just took a bit to eat at Chipotle. Okay, I'm easily growing my training account daily. I'm easily growing my training account daily. I am easily growing my training account daily. I'm easily growing my training account daily. I'm easily growing my training account daily. I'm excited to push my team to grow exponentially. I'm excited to push my team to grow exponentially. I'm doing my affirmation pitch. I'm excited to push my team to grow exponentially. I'm excited to push my team to grow exponentially. I'm excited to push my team to grow exponentially. I'm excited to push my team to grow exponentially. I'm easily creating viral and valuable content. Easily creating value, viral, viable content. Easily creating viral, viable content. Easily creating viral, and viable content. Easily creating viral, and viable content. I'm easily creating viral, and viable. Hey, listen, what I should and then exercise delay. Let's watch an 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 exercise delay. And that's what I should exercise today. That's what I should exercise today. That's what I should exercise today. And that's what I should exercise today. That's what I should exercise today.
I'm gonna do my visualization, guys.
I don't. <clears throat> don't. <clears throat> <clears throat> We're still these buys. We're still these buys, guys. Okay, now I'm gonna do my goals. Write down my goals. I did my affirmations and visualization. Now I'm gonna write down my daily goals, which is literally like the same thing, but writing it down. And I gotta read the Bible. I'm gonna have to exercise. I'm gonna have to learn something, read and learn. I have to create content, which I'm doing right now. And I have to email one person reach out have to reach out to do an interview uh, podcast stuff okay Actually, my entry is at 7141. Do a shoulder dance.
We'll be taking like the majority of our profits around this area, though. Just so you guys know, the majority of our profits are going to be taken out around here. About 75% of them. Let's roll, man. Let's roll, bro. Supports maintaining though. Diagonal and uh, horizontal support is maintaining. Yeah. Like the regular. Take some profits here, the majority of them here, and let the rest run 25, 50, 25. Why are we doing this? Because this is a, we're, we're, we're doing a buy in a selling environment. Gotta take away profits more aggressively. until we get real confirmation that this is going to be a buy and then we can go and enter again. Real confirmation will be root. Hmm. Yeah, we probably are getting a selling. We need to let this form out though. We need to let this form out. Not enough volume, guys. It's just not enough volume. Mm. 
Not at all. It's okay. So, our reading, Psychology of Risk. So trading codes also psychological and motivational questions, questions that empower people to change their perceptions. He conducts, he conducts, okay, he conducts complex conversations that are brought down to everyday performance. He encourages traders to find what is getting in the way of higher performance. I would, for example, try to help a trader who is a butt of criticism to use the criticism as a guide to help more closely at the, um, kinds of things he might do to improve his performance. In the same way, I will focus a lot of attention on helping a trader discover what more can be done to improve his trading. I try to help the traders see new behaviors that can be adopted in order to change the game. One trader made the comment, I think we have done all that we can do. I try to discover why this trader feels this way and try to motivate the trader to push further and pursue greater goals. Is he afraid to explore? Is he afraid to admit the truth? Maybe, maybe he hasn't gotten the help he needed in the past or wasn't open or receptive to help. An important part of coaching is to recognize that traders are often overstimulated and encouraged by the coaching conversation. They may, they may then radically change their behavior and find themselves in, over their heads. Some traders get too much, get too rash, and start taking bigger, risks than desirable. Therefore, all coaching must be presented with the caveat that trader, that the trader, while stretching to expand his risk taking, must trade in terms of well-established risk management parameters. And without making any radical changes in strategies that have consistently worked, all changes must be done carefully. The coach has to be the regulator. Notice patterns and encourage traders not to build their positions too excessively. His communication skills must be honed because it is imperative that he is not misinterpreted. A coach has to encourage incremental shifts rather than radical shifts in the trading process. Yeah, see, this is probably going to, it can probably, it's probably not going to hit stop loss, but we're probably going to get uh let's see here because we have a <clears throat> we have uh you know this happened big massive thing big move boom, boom, boom. and then it creates a new low big move up that that it creates a new low That's probably what's going to happen next. But money flow, I mean, it's starting to go from negative to positive, but it can easily go back down again. Uh, let's go in the 30 minute, though. That's where we're going to be. Uh oh. Should have waited for the, the breaking confirmation. Huh? <clears throat> Case study coaching traders on handling emotions of coaches. Remember that coaching for different people requires different strategies. Different people require different kinds of help. Ideally, a coach will want to help you stop, uh, find your stopping point, that dimension of your trading where you are fearful of taking action despite what your fundamental or technical analysis or feel for the market is telling you. I don't have that issue. Um, other issues I do, but not that one. Here the coach may be able to give you some kind of exercise such as keeping a diary 
for timing your feelings to help you gain mastery over the problem, interfering with your trading success. Listen to my discussion with Hillel, an anxious trader who needed help in handling his emotion. Hillel tended to get scared out of trades too soon. His trading decisions were emotional rather than rational. Early in April 2000 on a Wednesday, he decided um, <clears throat> he decided that the market was going to collapse over the following week. So he put on a big short position overnight in the standard and uh, S&P. For him, this was 150% of his capital and was the biggest he's ever gotten. Yeah, what the, uh-oh, we got, a, we got that coming there. We got the, the M, double top, M, double top with the right shoulder being that, that's not good. Not good at all. So here's a new support. We're gonna stick to our guns though. On Thursday, the market was up about half a percent, and he was and he was very quiet about. But Thursday, but Thursday afternoon, he was feeling what he called high anxiety, so he got rid of his shorts. Twenty minutes later, the market started to go down, but he thought, "I can, I can't put the shorts back on because I just got rid of them. They were causing me too much anxiety." However, the S and P continued to go down on Thursday. Friday, they went down some more at the opening. His shorts and longs were balanced, and he let them go down and then covered his shorts when the s and were down by 50 points. He got out of a long position an hour later when it was clear it wasn't going to work. In discussing the, this trade, he talked about losing a big bet because of the failure to follow his strategy. Hello, the trader. I'm always fe more fearful than I am greedy. I never want to let anything get out of hand. I will write it on a piece of paper in front of me. Do not get out of this trade unless you lose one or two percent. Then by two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm feeling anxiety and I say to hell with it and I get out of the trade. Don't do that. That's fucking stupid. Um, I can often do something strategically, which is probably my strongest suit, but I then exit because of anxiety. On Thursday, I started feeling anxiety around 1030 in the morning. And I started saying, gee, the market could go up a percent and a half, uh, and a half quickly. And then, may, and then and maybe I should be there. Then I looked at the piece of paper that said, don't get out of this position. And by two o'clock, continue to feel anxiety. I said, it hasn't worked yet. Maybe it won't work. And what I felt then was an anxiety. It was remorse or stupidity or something. Well, I, or something. The right thing, obviously, if I had been a perfect computer, would have been to put the position back on. But then again, sometimes I make a mistake. And the right thing is just to walk away and do nothing. I would be better off if I would just put down my strategy, put my trade on in the morning and walk away because the strategies tend to be right. That's where I make my money, either as an analyst in individual stocks or as a strategist. When I get into the trading aspects, that's where I start to trip over my toes. My problem is that I exit trade when I start losing and sort of walk around the block. If I'm trying to make 80% a year, then I have to risk losing 6% on one day. But emotionally, if it doesn't, but emotionally, if it doesn't fit, I either have to change the emotion or walk around the emotions. Kiev, which is the author. Just because the market doesn't go the way you want it to go doesn't mean you should be out of the game. You want to notice that you're anxious. What's the amount that you can tolerate trading? Given that you're anxious, as opposed to taking yourself out of the game completely. When I feel anxious, I start to reduce my positions by removing 20 lots. And then I feel better. But 10 minutes later, the anxiety is back and I start to reduce it by 10 or 20 at a time until there's nothing left out of it. When I started, I said I was going to go from 120 to 100. Now it's going to stay there because I have written on this piece of paper, stay with the position. I stayed for a couple of days, but then I couldn't. 
What's the amount of capital that you can risk? Giving your strategy so you can practice writing out the anxiety. If I had stayed with it, I would have made 12%. So you're saying I should try to feel the anxiety and don't get out of the trade then? Own it. That's the best thing, guys. When you guys are trading and you see the positions going against you and you're feeling like, oh, man, oh, dude, who gives a shit? Stay, stick with your trade. Stick with it, I'm telling you. Stick with it. I've won so many trades this way. I've had it to where my stop loss almost hit, like right there, about to hit. Just stick with it and then go in and hit my trades. So guys, kind of just do your trades. Okay. Um, it's a natural reaction that when you feel anxious, you try to reduce the anxiety. It never occurred to me just to own the feeling. If I could write out the feeling, I could do better financially. That's interesting. Yes, yeah, sir. It sure fucking is, huh? Will Chamberlain used to throw up for every game. You want to notice your feelings and keep a diary to record how long they last. Actually, turning on a stopwatch and measuring the duration of the feelings is the best way to frame them. You will discover when these feelings reappear and then they last and that they last shorter and shorter periods of time until eventually you have mastered the art of writing them out. Most traders trade in a way that allows them to feel comfortable but super traders are willing to allow themselves to be uncomfortable to make it. They're playing it as smart as they can. For example, astronauts are trained to observe their own responses. When they're in a rocket ship, they get all the information as part of taking off, not just speed and altitude. Speed and altitude. But also their own, their own pulse and heart rate. They know what to expect. Then when they, leave, then when they level off, they settle down. When they're about to land, they know what to expect. Some they know to expect some apprehension. Again, it's monitoring your own anxiety, so it becomes another measure of what the markets are doing. Maybe it's getting scary, but it's telling you that possibly everybody is scared. Use it as information. I'm not suggesting that you stop feeling the anxiety altogether, and I'm not suggesting that we give you Valium to get rid of it. I'm suggesting that you learn to use it. I really have a risk aversion that's been shown up by my experience. The issues for me as the, the issues for me are getting the emotions out of the way and writing a winner properly. On the big trades, I'm almost never able to sit with it. Can you throw with your left hand? No, I've, I've never tried. You could probably learn. It's a skill thing. Can you learn the skill of holding a stock from 24 to 50%? or holding a third of the stock from 24 to 50? I understand what you're saying. I can learn to play tennis with my left hand without any emotional scarring, but holding a stock working to 50 requires me to react differently. It's a different type of learning. But it's learning a skill, it's learning to hold, it's learning to hold even though you're feeling uncomfortable. It's a discomfort in doing something new. If you haven't done it, it feels awkward or weird to do something that in your mind, as an analyst, you know makes perfect sense. So you're not able to translate the thought process into the key mo into the key motion. Identifying it and putting a circle around it will make it easier to see. That's part of the game. It will also give you more confidence to handle the S&P short positions. Okay, so then what I do, this is a very cool thing. You get a piece of paper as your bookmark, and then you write the notes that you learned on that reading session on that paper. Bam. I learned to use emotions, own them when you're feeling them. Don't try to avoid them. Keep trade idea and execute on it. Even though emotionally it can it can be difficult. Yeah, because if if you 
guys, if you if you kept that trade open, um, and uh, I mean, yeah, and, and it's following your system, shit, dude, just keep it open. Keep it open. You're gonna fucking it's gonna it's gonna mess with you, obviously, emotionally, like it is right now. I'm like, oh crap. What are we doing here? No, right? Knowing the patterns, knowing that it goes down, whips up, does a, does a goes down, whips up, creates a left shoulder, a right shoulder, and then it goes down like this. Like I, 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 I definitely would see it's getting probably weaker. I should have probably waited on that, uh, but, but, right. So I'm, I'm going against what I'm saying, right? But it did tap seven one eight. It did tap seven eight six. And this pattern, and we got this going on right here. This is this is starting to go back up again. Um, and it's I'm using this analysis here, balanced off the seven eight six, just like how it's doing here. Okay, man. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys, I'm gonna end this session. Yes, have a fucking amazing day. Okay. Thank you.